Hi, I'm Neha. I got to play pro tennis and travel around the world for six years. After that, I graduated from college and moved to New York. Through these awesome adventures, I learned a lot about the body, mind, and practical ways to improve myself. I'd like to share them with you. Welcome to Neha Shows. Hey guys, today I want to talk about something really personal to me, which is mental health. I think it's really important to talk about so we can start destigmatizing mental health issues. I think a lot of people who do suffer from that get pinpointed by society as people who are weak or defective in some way, um, who can't handle life in reality. And I really think that this couldn't be farther from the truth. I think mental health issues arise often when people have been really strong for a long time. And we as human beings can only be strong for finite amounts of time before we start to compensate in different ways. So I kind of wanted to go over my journey and what I've been through in this past decade or so uh, to hopefully shed some light and help you on your journey. Um, so I, I got an eating disorder when I was about 19 or 20 and um, I, I became bulimic. So for those of you who don't know what bulimia is, it's uh, where you engage in sessions of binging copious amounts of junk food and then proceed to vomit or force yourself to vomit this food uh, very violently. And um, bulimia is a form of depression. Uh, and, and I won't really get into the details of how or why, but um, you know the, the root cause really came from a, a, a deep sense of self-dissatisfaction or self-loathing. Um, and yeah, people will say like, oh, this person has a problem with food or they can't control their weight or they have body image issues. And those, those can definitely be layers on top of the root cause of eating disorders, but they're definitely not the cause. Um, oftentimes. I mean, I'm not a medical professional, but from what I've experienced, that seems to not be the case. And so I, I suffered from this binging and purging for about a year and a half until I kind of recognized that this was something that was beyond my control, that I had started getting really addicted to fe the feeling after a really violent attack, an episode where I would vomit really violently and I would I would pass out and it was my chance to just kind of be numb to the world and it was the only time I felt like I could relax my mind and my body and just be at peace and I'd usually pass out and it was just really unhealthy for me. And so, you know, I recognized, okay, this is a problem, but it did it took me another about six months before I found the courage to tell my parents, like, hey, I, there's something wrong and, and I think I need help. And my parents were really loving and supporting. And they, they, they realized I needed professional help. And I went to a center, you know, and I, it took away the, the symptoms, the actual acts of binging and purging. But what still lingered with me, with me was, again, this root cause, the self-dissatisfaction. And, you know, because of that, I, I suffered from bouts of depression and anxiety and depression and anxiety um, for many years. And... Every time I would go through a bout, I would think, oh my god, I, I can't pull myself out of this. Like, I give up, I surrender, I can't do this again. And somehow, through, you know, my support system, through my good habits, I was able to pull myself out of it. And what I learned from this is that every time I've pulled myself out of it, it's always gotten easier. And the bouts have become less severe. And so that's kind of given me hope when I look back and see like, oh, I was so much worse before. It was like a tsunami and then it was a hurricane and now it's kind of just like a light drizzle. And I think knowing that has given me confidence um, to handle whenever this comes about again. But I wanted to go over you're sending it out to somebody you trust or you're just you know writing it to yourself or emailing it um, journaling has really been a big part of my life and has helped me process my emotions and then the support system has been great um, you know my family and friends the close ones have really have been there for me whether they've known it or not in certain times so I think I've, I've been really lucky but I also wanted to say that 
you know, because of the mental health challenges I've had, I really had to take a deeper look at who I am and I had to learn about myself a lot more and a lot quicker than maybe most people. You know, what makes me tick, uh, what my habits are, you know, when I'm falling into negative patterns, when I'm not using my strengths or I'm falling into bad habits. And I think that's really important for everybody to know, just to know yourself better. I think that's like a really big reason why we're here on this earth. Another thing that I've also, uh, that's given me a lot of courage and a lot of excitement is that um, when I am going through these bouts, I'm now able to step away from my emotions or my thoughts or my, you know, the, the chatter that's in my head and, and kind of distance myself from it. Not that it still doesn't completely overtake me, but there are moments where I can kind of step back and see, okay, this is what's happening to Neha and it's there, it's very much real, it's valid, but I can kind of give myself space. And that's been new for me and it's been fantastic. So these are the kinds of things I've done, but it's taken a lot of commitment and it's taken me years and years of work to get to this point. So now where I'm able to recognize whatever it is that it, that, I, that might lead me into a negative pattern. Uh, and I still have slip ups, you know, I'm human, I make mistakes. Uh, but I wanted to say that it is possible and my journey has not been easy and it, it's been very difficult. But because I've made a commitment to myself and to getting better, it's gotten easier. I hope this video helped you and, and shed some light for you and I, I hope that you never feel alone. I remember I felt very alone. I felt like nobody has my story. Nobody understands me. And you're right, nobody has your story. But I would say that more often than not, people are going through very similar things. And uh, you'd be surprised to know that you're not the only one out there having the exact same thoughts. I hope that this video has helped you. Um, if you do read my vlogs, you see that I have a big emphasis on mental health or inner well-being and personal development because I really think that that's a really important starting place for anybody who's trying to achieve anything in life. And I also just wanted to say that, you know, just because you have a mental health challenge, it by no means means that you can't have long-lasting relationships or you can't have professional success or that you can't achieve what you want to. I think it just means you have to know yourself a little bit better uh, which might actually help you in the long run. I hope this video helped and thanks for watching.